Thanks for joining us at the Clive Barker Podcast. For this episode, we're doing something a little different. This is a Dungeons & Dragons game I've been developing for the past year or so, and this first episode introduces two of the five characters. Clive Barker fans and D&D players, please have mercy on us. It's a new venture and we're liable to stumble as we go along. But we do it because we love it. In this episode, Musette, played by longtime friend of the show, Catalina Carita of Little Spark Films, is transferred to Squad 77 in Isordorex to meet Cherdovir and uncover the beginning of a cultist plot. After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the fugue, After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. So Musette, um, you've just uh, you've been back at the uh, back in the the fugue um, for only about uh, about two weeks. Uh, you've been traveling the world, uh, playing your music all over the world, and um, but now you're back at the fugue, um, and you heard about an an, uh, an opening. Of course, everybody at the in the fugue knows about Jericho Squad because they bought up all the properties surrounding where the fugue unraveled, in uh, in the backyard, and they uh, they control everyone who comes in and out. It's a it feels a little ominous, but at the same time, they've also been nice uh, and uh, fairly permissive about you know as long as they know who's going in and out, they're they're they've been good with it. Um, but you heard about an opening uh, to go visit it to to uh, join a different. You're in Squad Three in at at the um, at the Fugue in Liverpool, but you heard about an opening to go to another world, and uh, and so you kind of jumped in ju- jump, jumped in, and it's uh, so you'll be joining Squad Seventy Seven in his Order X. Uh, so it's about seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, you've you've uh, arrived. You're you're waiting for them to open up uh, at Jericho Squad so that you can go inside. When uh, your cousin Aldrin uh, comes up to you, and she says, "How dare you make me wake up this early? You know I don't like goodbyes, and I don't like early mornings." I was just kind of thinking that you'd want to see me off. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty uh, new adventure. <laughs> She's a dear, sweet Musette. You've only been home uh, for two weeks, and I've seen more of my cousin on the YouTube than I have in person. She's, You've hardly been home uh, for a total of 30 days in 30 years. Hmm. Well... I don't really feel like we 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 have a, a home, not not in the way that uh, that the cuckoos refer it to. So we just gotta keep uh, keep searching and trying to find a better place for everyone. Well, th- we th- this is a little bit of a, a mini city for itself. It's not much, but you know at least we can prepare uh, protect it. And and you know that uh, Aldrin is also in Jericho Squad Three, uh, but she joined up because she wants to have an, you know, like you would join a condo association, right? She wants to have an active role in deciding who comes in and out of, of the fugue and uh, wants to know, she wants to be on the inside with Jericho to know if, they're, if their plans are nefarious 
but she's been with them for 30 years and uh, it's been really quiet. Not much has really gone on. There's been no real threats. Um, so she says, okay, well, uh, and she looks at the guard uh, at the building and she says, I've already cleared it with the boss lady. Musette will leave after lunch. And she kind of grabs your arm and, and she says, you, my cousin, have a prize to win for me, and this will be worth it. Uh, we have an appointment at the orchard, you and I. And so uh, she starts leading you down towards the orchard of Lemuel Lowe. <laughs> so when you get down to the orchard, you see that there are already people uh, sitting around uh, the stage. Um, like they've already been uh, been warned that they're have been uh, let in on, that there's some kind of a uh, performance going to happen. And uh, so um, Aldrin gets up on the stage and addresses the crowd and she says, okay, so you all know that our musette, of course, is going to go wandering again, but before she does, we're going to make her uh, perform for us. And so, and and uh, she says, but she has to beat me. And she gets out her loot, and you know that her loot is is uh, kind of fancy and magical. And she says, um, and so she starts playing. Uh, she starts playing her loot. And I was gonna do. I mean, I gotta pull up her character sheet too. She's gonna. So it's gonna be like competing performance checks. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, um, so she's playing her lute and the crowd's starting to get into it. And uh, she got 17. So it's pretty good. Uh, the crowds, uh, the crowd seems really excited with her performance on the lute. And, uh, and then she kind of looks over to you. Okay. Well, let's see. I guess, uh, Vio. Right, I have a I have a dulcimer, a lyre, and a viol. Yeah, yeah. So she's she's kind of expecting sort of like a a, a lyre duel. Yeah, but what if I don't want to do a lyre duel? What if I want to play with a viol just to <laughs> kind can, of throw things off? <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna pick the viol because it is a mm -hmm. fairly fairly different ish. I mean, it's still a stringed instrument, but uh, yeah. different enough, you know, that it could make a different sound. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, so, so start playing my roll, viol. Yeah, roll a performance check. Okay, so that's just the twenty, right? Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, larp. I got nine. Okay, and then plus your performance bonus. Um. Plus four, thirteen. Okay, so thirteen. Yeah. And uh, she kind of winks at you and she starts sort of uh, doing some refrains from one of your popular songs that you've that people have seen uh, you do on YouTube. And so she gives you bardic inspiration so you can roll another D6 onto the top of that. Okay. So the six is the this one, right? Yeah, the square one. No, like a regular cube, or I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, the okay. cube. Uh, four. That's what I rolled four. for. So 13 plus four is 17. So you are, uh, you, your first one is a tie. Okay. Okay, I gotta find that here. Okay. Okay, and then uh, so then back over to her, and she rolls. Uh, she she starts. She performs again. Uh, she sees that you're playing the viol, and she kind of she kind of rolls her eyes and winks at you. Uh, but she starts playing. Okay, wow. So she got. Uh, 
an 18 that time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should switch dice. Okay, and then uh, and then she kind of looks over at you. Um. <clears throat> your cousin's kicking your butt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, is there any sort of uh, way that I can do anything that's like acrobatics related, or like maybe leaps and and or jumps? Maybe make it more of like a dance performance. Um. Yeah, yeah. If you want, yeah, definitely. You can uh, you can jerk. do do an acrobatics uh, on top of that. So make an acrobatics check first. Oh my god, I got a two. Okay. So yeah, you, <laughs> Why? you, you try you try to do that, but uh, but you're it's still early morning and uh, it didn't quite pan out the way you wanted. It didn't have your coffee yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead and make your performance check. Okay. Uh, why? I got a nine. Okay. Uh, and this is just not a good yeah. start of the day. Okay. Okay. So, um, so she won that one, and the crowd is kind of going crazy uh, for for her. Um, Woo! So she's gonna start playing again. <laughs> I'm the crowd clapping. Oh. Okay, so you're uh, you're kind of uh, tripping over your feet a little bit uh, through her quite quite a bit, and uh, so she she's playing and she kind of bow and uh, she made a, a mistake on her liar. Actually, a liar probably wouldn't sound like that. But <laughs> oh, Rob, are you, are you able to find liar music on uh, on Roll Twenty? I mean, on on um, tabletop audio. I'll check. And or viol music. Musette's going to start twirling some branches in the uh, orchard of Lemuel Low. So on this one, she got a seven total. So she really kind of biffed it. Oh, no. And the crowd goes, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty. Uh... Delete your YouTube channel. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's your Instagram? Yeah. Aldrin, Aldrin doesn't. I mean, there's there's no internet in the fugue. Uh, they all, they all uh, sort of talk their way into the lobby of Jericho to be able to watch stuff on TV and on the internet. Okay, well, hopefully no one's re recording this. <laughs> um, okay, well, then maybe what, um, what I should do is just stop messing around and plant, plant myself firmly and uh, play a very classical piece that is incredibly important to everyone in the fugue. All right, make a performance check. And you can make it with advantage. So that means you roll twice and take the higher number. Okay, well, because I got 18. You're playing, you're playing a song that's important to everyone. Okay, well, I got 18 just now. Oh, okay. I think that's probably good. I don't, I don't know if I need to roll again. Yeah, no, you don't. That's pretty, that's pretty high. Okay, so the crowd kind of goes crazy and uh, they forget about your, uh, about your uh, attempted dance performance. So unfair. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then Aldrin um, looks over at you and uh, she sort of takes off from there and, and uh, play, starts playing that same song on the, on the lyre. Oh my gosh. Um, but she got a 21. Oh, man. What? 21? <laughs> yeah. I think she's trying to deliberately embarrass you before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Okay, and then uh, and and then she kind of looks over at you and and she winks again and gives you another bardic inspiration. So you can add a, a d6 to your roll. Five. Five total. Yep. Uh, well, five on top of the eighteen, so twenty-three. Oh no! So you're this is a new one, so you're rolling again. Oh, okay. So you roll the twenty-sided die and a six-sided die. Okay. Add those together and then add your uh, performance. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just rolled a six, so six and five is eleven. Uh. Okay. Oh, plus the twenty-sided die. Yeah, the six is what I got on the twenty-sided die. Oh, okay. And, and I don't want to roll the six again. I don't want to roll the six-sided die again because I just got a five. So I'm gonna leave oh, that okay. one the way it is. Oh, okay. So six and five six is, a, is eleven. Yeah. Plus your performance. So it's still kind of it's still that's still a loss. Yep. You think that's okay? Bad. My my performance modifier is minus one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, it. So the the um, the contest kind of comes to a close, and and she says it was a great effort, but I think you've gotten a little soft being out there with the cuckoos. And she says, "Come back to me again, and we'll try this again sometime." Um, so I then think you... that oh, sorry, I was just gonna say I no, think that someone needs to uh, you know figure out a better way to uh, to deal with their with their sadness that their cousin is leaving. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I just know that it's uh, probably a more dangerous world that you're heading into, and I wanted to um, wanted to find a way to give this to you. And she shows you the the uh, the Klee liar that she has. Oh, thank you. The crowd you still... goes wild. <laughs> do you, do you Love still... you. Well, at this point, you've kind of moved over to uh, to lunch, so you're you're kind of sitting at a, a table by the orchard and, and having some lunch. And she says, "I thought you could win this from me, but uh, maybe you'll just have to get your experience on the road." And she hands it to you. Wow! Um, it, thank, it'll thank take you, so you about. Much. It'll take you about an hour to get uh, attuned to it, so you just kind of have to sit with it there uh, during lunch. But uh, if you go into equipment, and then you click on the manage, this is on uh, D and D Beyond, and you click on the manage equipment, and then you type in uh, C L I space liar, and that'll that'll bring it up, and you can add it and equip it. It'll it'll. It'll give you some new magic spells and everything. Sweet. Okay, equipment. And then manage equipment, the little square thing to the right of the search bar there. Mm, okay, manage. And then and then uh, in the filter, you type in CLI space liar. And uh, you should be able to find it and then add that on there. Oh, I had to go to I. Uh, at a, it was, I believe, CLI. Yeah. There we go. Fire. It says wondrous yeah. item. Copy that. It is added. Liar, liar. Musette is on fire. <laughs> yeah. From a terrible performance. Well, it wasn't terrible. Um, actually, she had a, one part that was terrible also. It was a setup. <laughs> Okay. So, um, you take to, you take time to have lunch. Is there anything you wanted to talk to uh, talk with Aldrin about before you before you head out again? <sighs> um, um, yes, Aldrin, do you have any advice before I before uh, we go back? I go back out. I hope that you find whatever you're looking for out there. Uh, I only joined Jericho to protect the Fugue. Um, that's, I think, I think of the Fugue as our home, and and I um, and and that's why I want to protect it. And so I hope that uh, you can find a home sometime too, either here or elsewhere. 
but you need uh, but i want to give the give you this to protect yourself because i think things have been pretty quiet around here so we probably don't need it thank you and thank you for reminding me to stay humble <laughs> Well, you probably saw that I biffed it one time there also. Uh, I don't think anyone noticed. <laughs> Is she younger or older than Musette? Uh, older. Okay. All right. So you, um, she, she gives you a hug there. She just, she says, I don't, you know, today's my day off. I don't really want to go back to Jericho. She says, so, um, stay in contact, please. And uh, so you you uh, head unless there's anything else you want to do, you can head over to the uh, head over to the Jericho entrance, which is basically the house you know where the the few unraveled in the backyard of a house, and so the Jericho entrance is really just the back door of the of this house. Okay. Um. So you you head in you head in there uh, and. The boss lady, you don't haven't known for very long. You've only joined up within the last few days. Um, but her name is as follows. Oh, Celeste. Her name is Celeste Arcaro. Um, she says, "Ah, uh, you're finally here. I, uh, it's all right. I know you're late. I know, but uh, but Aldrin explained it to me. You know, we 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 try to follow." We try to honor the customs of the of the fugue whenever we can, so it's all right. And I've already explained it to uh, to our our uh, guy on the other side there in in uh, in the second dominion. Um, and she says, "Just a second. And she she uh, grabs this this uh, sort of a, a duffel bag and hands that to, hands it to you. In addition to all of your stuff that you've already got packed." To leave you now you've got this duffel bag and she says these are basically just trinkets from the fifth dominion uh, they sell them uh jericho squad uh, 77 is it, there's a front uh that's also a, a shop something the the wonders of the universe i don't know what it's called but uh he sells stuff from there and and if you open the bag you can see inside there's like a VCR and a bunch of uh, video, like Disney videotapes, and um, Black Diamond. <laughs> right? No, no. They they seem like they were got bought from a, a car boot sale or a Goodwill. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, thank you for this. this is, uh, for this thoughtful gift that costs like five bucks well i mean it's actually potentially pretty useful because uh disney movies are, are a pretty good uh, collection of uh, fables and myths essentially <laughs> that have been handed down to children for to the common children i guess for the past 50 60 years you see one of the one of the uh, the seer kind um, you don't recognize, but uh, is is arranging tiles on the floor with symbols on them, and he says, w "We've only just got this. You're going to be the first one to use the express." Yay! And, I yeah. love being the guinea pig. <laughs> he says, now, I don't know, but I've heard that this is not a pleasant experience. So um, I they sent a guide on how to set this up. I believe that I got the tiles all right, uh, so <laughs> that you should be you should be heading to where you're supposed to go. Um, all I can say is please contact us when you get there. And uh, at this point, um, uh, Celeste says, "Musette, can I see your cell phone, please?" Okay, so hand okay. cell phone. So yeah, she she takes that from you and and uh, she puts on this this sort of stone looking case around it. She takes your other case off and hands it to you, and she puts a a stone looking one with a, a rune on the back side of it. And she says, "Your cell phone. Obviously, there's no cell networks in the uh, in the other dominions. 
Um, so your cell phone kind of becomes a useless brick, except that you can, you know, take videos and make recordings and stuff. But uh, this uh, will, this case will allow you to do a spell where you can contact and talk to us telepathically. She says, and she takes a selfie of herself with the, with the um, phone. And she says, basically, go through your photos on your phone. And when you look at one, it'll help you visualize that person. And then the, the stone on the back of your, on the back of your phone will let you contact us telepathically. Uh, she says, it's not on it, it, all the time, right? It's not like your no. like your locations. You got to go in and turn off your locations and turn them back. No, off. you 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 have to have the phone sitting in your hand, and you have to be concentrating on the person that you want to talk to. And you might get calls from us in the same fashion, which might be a little unnerving at first. Uh, you know, when you get when you hear start hearing voices in your head, you'll just know that you're probably not crazy. It's probably one of us trying to to reach you. And you don't need the photos. If you know somebody well enough, you can probably imagine them well enough to contact them. But the photos help. And that crazy 5G. Yeah. So, um, he th- and then, so he says, okay, uh, this is, uh, I believe this is all set up right. So, uh, are we willing to give do the the maiden voyage here of the uh, of the express and send you over to the second dominion in Isordorex? Okay, well I'm gonna send my cousin after you if you guys mess this up. <laughs> Let's it. go. He, he he looks worried there and he says, "Please don't." She scares me a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so um, it spins up. Uh, y- there's kind of a whirring uh, f- a- as you step onto the tiles. Um, make a charisma saving throw. So you see uh, under your attributes on the left, there's the saving throws box. Okay, saving so throws modifiers. Yeah. Charisma is plus four. Yes, right. Okay. So roll 20 sided die and add four to it. Okay. This roll doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> Seventeen. Wow, that's 17 really good. Seventeen plus four. Okay, so you um, you feel your body vibrating and your skin feels like it's itchy on the inside. Jeez. It's just this horrible, horrible feeling, and and uh, you feel a little bit like metaphysically you're being turned si- turned inside out, um, and what's known as your glyph. You you turn into your glyph, which is like the the sort of metaphysical inscription of who you are it's like a representation of your personality and with a 17 you're able to to really kind of hang on to that and uh you're you keep yourself really clear in your mind as you're sort of uh pushed forward in towards your destination and we'll kind of pause you there and uh and check back in with jose Oh, one thing I forgot. When you, when you woke up, uh, you remembered the dream from before. Um, the ice cave? Yeah, the ice cave and the, and the creatures. And meeting all of these other people. Okay, so, and uh, same thing with uh, Churdovir. You wake up in, your, in the library and, and you see your brother Drovo is standing over you. And he says, you're a late sleeper today. Yes, I, uh, so wait, how long has it been since the dream sequence? Uh, you're, you're, you're just waking up from it. Oh, okay. Drovo, I have just had a premonition. What was your premonition? I believe that we were in the mountains of the Jokalailau, and, uh, there were other people there, and I could sense that they were from the Fifth Dominion, and, um... There was an ominous presence that I, I hardly recall, but um, we vanquished the menace, and uh, I feel I fear that something is some something is coming, some some situation that we're going to have to deal with soon. Yeah. So so as you as you think more about your dream, make an intelligence check. Okay. Is that what dice do I use for that? Uh, 20 sided die and then you just add the intelligence modifier to it 
Okay, 20 sided die. I have rolled a three. Okay. okay. Three, All right. Yeah. Um, so you write down the significant details of it, and you hope that uh, that you'll be able to to ponder about it a little later. Okay. Um, and and Rovo says, you know, this sort of falls in line with some things that I've been seeing in the bowl, uh, and we'll we'll have to get back to that later. He says, the world is becoming a dangerous place. Uh, I would like you. I know you like reading about things more than you like doing them, but I think that it's important for you to attune to your silken sword. And this is a painful thing, but I'm here to watch over you, and if you get really hurt or knocked unconscious, uh, I'll be here to to heal you. And he, he shows you a, a healing potion that he's got on him, and he says, please do it now. You know, it's yes. one thing to to know a thing, to know about a thing, but it's another thing to to know it. Yes. So I will attune to my sword. So what do yeah. I roll? So you 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 grab your silken sword and you start think you start you know how this works because you 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 it's in, ingrained into your cultural history. You've read about it. You just start swinging it around and you concentrate on it and you try to. Uh, try to get on the same wavelength with it because it has a little bit of a magical con uh, consciousness to it. Okay, and, so uh, I'm, you... I'm swinging it around and I'm hearing the ribbon slice through the air and makes this like whooshing sound and I try to focus on the sound and what so do I do next? Make a dexterity check. So you just roll 20-sided die and add your dexterity bonus to it. Okay, dexterity is plus two. I got an 11, so I got a 13. Okay. Thirteen. Okay, so uh, that's uh, that's a success. So you got to do that two more times. Okay, I continue to swing that sword, and I, you know, I'm I'm trying to attune myself to it, and I'm reciting this prayer, and I roll again. Oops. Whoa. Okay. What? There it goes under the desk. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to oh, reroll God. that then. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. Rerolling. I got a, the dot marks the bottom, right? So uh, it's yeah. a six. Six plus uh, two. Two, yeah. So. Okay. Uh, so take your um, take your weapon and uh, make uh, roll damage on it against oh, yourself. Damn. I slice my ear or something? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So 20-sided uh, again? No, no. So you, you've already made the attack roll, so now you're just doing the damage. Okay, so it's a six-sided? Uh, four-sided die. Four-sided so die. So 1d4 plus 3. I got 1. Okay, so you add 3 to that, so it's you take 4 damage. So you click <laughs> on... I, I realize none of you guys got hurt in the last battle, so if you click on where it says hit points, it'll open up a little thing that says healing or damage, and you can just type 4 in the damage section. Ah, so I yell out in uh, Draconian, Potok! And, uh, I, got, I got four damage. We, you actually um, don't know. Draconian is not a language that we have in this game. Oh, it's not. So, I, okay, yeah, I said here. so. D and D Beyond uh, forces you to pick the D and D languages. So if okay. you go to features and traits, I think it is. And okay. uh, or notes, I think it's in. Yeah, in notes and other, I put your actual languages that you know. So okay, you know so English, Eredemic, Gloss, and Celestial. Okay, so I said curses, and I nick my ear with the sword. So yeah, it's so like four damage. That's half of your hit points. Dang, dude. Yeah. Okay, so Drovo kind of flinches, and he goes like, you know, okay, continue to. <laughs> All well, right, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll I'll be Drovo. Okay, I'm going to continue to roll another twenty sided die. Okay. And I got five plus two. That's seven. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so roll uh, roll the damage again. Uh, uh, Drovo uh, just kind of flinches. He sees what's happening, and it's morning. I just woke up, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one d four. So the pyramid shaped one again. Uh, plus three. I've got three plus three. That's six. Uh, so you're unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Time for um, someone to come with the, the potion. Yeah, yeah, you you wake up. Um... Shoot. 
Okay, let me get this. You're forcing us to do stuff when we we, we wake up, and I'm not a morning person. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm going to... I'm drinking the potion. Yeah, I got to look up. I forget how much the... So don't feel Thanks. too bad. Don't feel too bad, Musette. I'm also kind of like... <laughs> Bushing it. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, was that right? Did you do that? <laughs> that was me falling. Oh. <laughs> Unconscious. Bunk. No, seriously, I don't know what that was. Yeah, it was me. I, yeah. Okay. Okay, so 2d4 plus 2 is what we're Yikes. You're getting back. I'll roll it. From Drovo's potion. I gotta make myself a little dice tower. So for... this, pyra this pyramid dice is not very good to roll. So you get much... seven hit points back, and you're you're up. So you're uh, you're you're up back at with seven hit points now. Okay, so so far I had eleven, right? Seven and six. So yeah, so you kind of wake up with uh, Drovo uh, picking you up back on your feet, and he says, "I know this is a painful process, brother. Please just." You got. You must finish. I rub the nick in my ear, and I'm like, "Ouch." <laughs> okay, yeah. let's go ahead and continue to swing that sword around and focusing on attuning myself to the sword of my ancestors and roll twenty. Two. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. You, you you take damage again. So roll one d four plus three. Oh my ah. god. And, and Drovo says, oh no. Okay, one plus three, four. Yeah. Okay, so uh, one one more. Okay, one more. 20 sided die. Come on. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes and an ear. Yeah. 20! <clears throat> wow, is I'm that a lying. natural? Is I'm it a natural lying. 20? Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's a right full there. success. Um, it's Yay. It's finished. You 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 kind of feel like the the uh, silken sword is is uh, is tuned with you. Thank goodness. And this, this is something that was bothering you in the dream, but you never could quite put your put words to it. That why how is it that you knew how to use the sword when you in real life you had never actually used it? Um. But yes, it's working. And and uh, and Drovo, you could see he was kind of holding his breath. He goes, ah, okay. Uh, that that was more harrowing than I was expecting. Yes, yes, brother. Um, I just I I just realized that I wasn't really attuning properly, so I just um, I decided that I was going to get down with it, and I'm finally attuned <laughs> to the sword. He says, "Well, um, there's something I needed to talk to you about. I've been speaking with this Jericho organization. They are they're a group from the Fifth Dominion." Uh, they have interest in uh, primarily in in our Boston Bowl, but they also want uh, they also want are looking for recruits, and they're expecting me to go with them. Um, I, I believe one of them is going to be coming here shortly, uh, so I think this was this was the reason that I wanted you to do this now. And I'm sorry it's hard to do first thing in the morning when you wake up. I realize now, uh, probably. Having some more time would have been better. Um, it's fine. I, uh, Jericho, you said. I, I, I wonder if they had anything to do with the people that I saw in my premonition. I am curious about them, and I would like to know more about uh, that organization. I, I'm a, I, I, I believe that your dream what probably was prophetic. I don't know how or why. Uh, all I know about our dangers here is that obviously the Zenetics have been uh, have been really on me. They they oppose my rule, my uh, running for for the Ezor Direction Council. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I've heard rumor that uh, that they have a, they have new leadership and that they've taken on some new name, but I don't know what it is. Hmm. We must look into that. Um... I would like to meet those Jericho people when with you, if that's okay. I think that's 
I think that's wise. I think that we should, uh, that you should. Excellent. So let's be so, on our way. He says, well, uh, we're waiting for one of them to come and pick us up. And you do have, uh, you do have a little time. And I know you like, uh, I've arranged, so I've arranged the meeting to be in the library. Um, so let's head, let's head over there and, and we, we can take a look at, uh, maybe see if we can find anything about your dream. Let's, let's go to the library. Okay. Let's so make haste. The, your, your little house is old, is just uh, like right behind the library. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're, you're sort of the chief primary librarian for, for this place. Uh, the library is called the uh, library of the Uretimek Arcanum. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but, and it has a sign written in your uh, with the name. Gotcha. Uh, so you, you kind of unlock the doors and, and head inside. And, uh, one thing that's been kind of bugging you a little bit is, is these creatures. Cause you know, it's kind of right on the tip of your tongue, what they were, the creatures from your dream. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you have time, you can, uh, you can look that up and, and, uh, so that would just be a, a history check with, uh, advantage. Okay. History check with advantage, which means I can roll twice and pick the bigger one, right? Yeah. All right. So history has a plus five. Um, so which, what, what do I roll a 20? Yeah. 20 sided die. And then you add five to it and you can roll that twice and pick the I higher I got number. 19. Wow, plus, plus five, five is twenty four. Twenty four, yeah, yeah. You you knew right what book to go to. You went went straight to it, and uh, and you you looked up the righteous, um, and you know that the righteous were creatures that uh, that were sort of guarding the tombs of the of the uh, the goddesses that were encased in the ice in the Jakalelau Mountains. But you had be they were believed to be destroyed by the the reconciler. Yes. So it's it's odd that you would see them, even if it was just a dream. It's it's odd that you would still you would see them again. So do I remember this while I'm with Drovo now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Drovo, I think I remember what were the creatures that we fought in in our vision, and oh, they were yes. the righteous, but uh, but the righteous should be all but extinct. Thanks to the reconciler, um, so well, I wonder what they were protecting and how they returned back to the Jokalailao. Well, the the, the right, righteous are creatures of the unbeheld, and uh, something else that's been bothering me is that the Zenetics seem to have uh, seem to have a oh god now that my, it's slipping my mind. Um, the guy with the hands praying for a head, Anolianak. Yeah, the 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 righteous seemed, or the not the righteous, the the um, Zenetics seem to have Anolianak with them. I don't know what this pretends, but I thought the Anolianaks all uh, were washed away in the first Dominion. That is very strange indeed. Um, I thought all the Anolianaks had concentrated and been defeated. Uh, so maybe that's something we need to find out what's going on in the first. I agree. He's, and uh, so he's, 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 you have uh, a couple of hours until, uh, until this person from the fifth dominion arrives from Jericho. So, um, at this point you, you, you can go back to your studies, uh, you you if you want to you can uh try to to research a spell uh, and add add a spell to your spell book sure i think i'm going to so if you go into... thanks to thank thanks to my dexterity with the weapon and i'm still kind of achy on my ear i think i'm going to study um arcane recovery oh okay so this would be a, it would have to be a first level spell Okay, so then so you means... go to manage spells and then the spell book, manage and spells, then uh, spell book, yeah, manage spell, and then you go to um, add spell. So I'm looking at my spells, I have the cantrips and the first level, yeah. So you, you can't learn any more cantrips, but you can learn one more first level. You can, you oh, can, sweet. uh, 
first you can um write down one more spell it first level spell into your uh into your book excellent so how do i do that because i'm looking at the spells tab on my yeah profile. so you go to spells tab and then spell book and then add spell book Uh, manage spells. Yeah, and then and so then you see the first level spells. Spell okay. They'll have like a little learn button next to them, so you can and you can click on the name of it to to read what. Oh, they I do. see. Some of them are prepared, and some of them are saying remove. Yeah, maybe I could. Well, so you you need to be yeah you need to be in the spell book part though. Okay, I am on I am in the spell book part. Okay. It says cantrips three, prepared spells four, four known. Yeah, and and then it says there's a list of spells and uh... right. So you see the ones that say um, the ones that say learn next to them are mm. first level spells. Neither of them says learn. All what four of them, three of them say remove, and four of them say prepared. Okay, so oh, did you click on um, did, so instead of prepared spells, click on add spells. I or, yeah, you click on the spell book and then uh, and then add spells. Uh, sorry, I guess yeah, just add spells. I'm sorry, I don't see sp when I click on spell book, it just gives me the list of spells that I have, and then it has right. Filter. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you don't click on spell book. You click on add spells. Oh, add spells. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then, I um, I get to learn one of these first level. Yeah. And yeah. I have to filter by level, right? Uh, well, no, because they're not, uh, they're not going to give you an option for anything past first level. Okay. So there's zero and first. Yeah. And zero is cantrips. Oh, okay. And, um, and cantrips are ones, spells you can do all the time that don't use spell slots. Sure. But sure. you only get a certain number and, and, and that's it. And you just Ooh, know them all the time. There's a lot of interesting things here. How about I select mage armor? Okay. I'm going to learn that's that one. That's a good one to have because your armor class is 12, so you're going to get beat yeah. up a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you click learn on that one, and now that's in your spell book. And excellent. it's the morning, so you can, uh, if you want to re-prepare your spells, you can. So you can switch which ones you have available to you. Okay. Do I have to do something now? Uh, so then when you go to spells again, mm -hmm. and then manage spells... I see. And then click on prepared spells. Ah. So I if you seven. remove if you remove one, then you can prepare another. Ah, okay. So I guess I'll remove minor illusion and I will prepare um Mage Armor. That's strange, because Mage Armor's not here. That's weird. I thought I added the spell. Um hang on. Let me go back to Mage Armor. That yeah, says remove, so I guess I it's, did learn it. Yeah, it's definitely in your. Yeah, if you click on the spell book and then manage spells, it down at the bottom you can see the the ones that are prepared. Mm -hmm. So mage armor is grayed out. So if you unprepare another one, ah, there you go. Okay, I guess I will unprepare um, absorb elements. And, and I will prepare and, and mage anyone armor. that has a has a little block with an R after it, like Tensor's floating disc. Yes. Is a ritual spell. Mm -hmm. So that means you can take ten minutes to cast it and you don't have to use a spell slot or um or have it prepared because you're just reading it out of your book. Oh, that's useful. Okay. Yeah. But so you, you don't do that in combat because ten minutes the fight will be over. But um Right. But for non combat situations ritual spells are good to have understood so i'm in my library i've been studying i learned mage armor and i've prepared okay. it and i've unprepared absorb elements okay all right so then at this point we'll go back to musette uh musette you um you you feel your your kind of flesh congeal back around your uh your um glyph of yourself and you arrive in the you you arrive in the second dominion, and I guess make a make a Constitution saving throw. So you take your yeah. So you roll twenty sided die and add your Constitution saving throw bonus to that. Okay. Um, oh, Constitution. Okay, it's eighteen, and then my wow. uh, Constitution is a plus one. Okay. 
So as you arrive, uh, your your vision clears up and you see a big, tall, furry man uh, pushes a bucket up towards you. Uh, and and you you feel a little bit of an urge to throw up, but it you uh, you manage to uh, you manage to not. So your he says he says welcome. I'm Bentley Widget. He's a, he kind of looks a little bit like Chewbacca wearing armor, but his face is a little more round. And uh, he says you're from the Fifth Dominion. Yes. Your I'm name is the urge to say that he's adorable. <laughs> Your name is is Musette, right? Yes. That is right. Do you do you have something for me? I don't know, do I? <laughs> I asked them to I asked them to bring me some videotapes. Oh, that's what this duffel bag is for. <laughs> Well, can I at least keep like a movie or two? Nah, I probably don't well, need it. Have you know that uh, we don't get a lot of customers, so I watch the movies. Yeah, here you go. You can have them. So you you can you you can watch them too. So, my name is Bentley Widget. Nice to meet you, Bentley. Thank you for helping me uh, make this transition. Well, thank you. You're our very first member. I love the name. So, we've been uh, we've been waiting for you, or I've been waiting for you here for a while. You were going to come in the morning, but uh, now it's getting a little later, and you have an appointment for your first mission. I was going to show you around uh, my shop and the downstairs. This is the uh, the Seven Wonders of the Imagica is what the store, 77 Wonders of the Imagica is what the store is called. Kind of a hiding in plain sight sort of thing. Oh. That's clever. But. Uh, but you're going to have to go pretty soon. Your very first mission, you have to rendezvous with uh, our, our newest member. His name is Drovo Dovir. Okay. I'm sorry for my uh, tardiness, but hopefully we'll be able to come back soon. And like I said, we'll watch uh, we'll watch those movies. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. I like the cartoon movies. So, you're from the Fifth Dominion. Can you drive a motorcycle? Uh, I'm sure I can figure it out. Well, this one has a sidecar, so you won't fall over. <laughs> well, that's good. Says, okay, so where well, does this uh, meeting take place? Uh, it, it takes place in about two hours, which is about how much time it will take you to drive there. And he, he, uh, he says, I, I put this map together because I know you've never been here before. And, and he, he hands you a map of, of uh, Isordorex. But or well, it's a map from where you are to to the the. He says where you're going is called the Library or uh, the Euratomic Library Arcanum. Uh, it shouldn't be a very busy place, and he says, and the sign won't be in English. It'll be in Euratomic, so it looks like this. And he signed, and he uh, he fills out, he he writes down the name, which is written in characters that you've never seen before. He says the man you're looking for. Drovo Dovir has dark skin. He ha he has a bald head. Uh, he his eyes are very strange. They have two pupils in each eye. Okay. Uh, he'll be waiting for you there at the library, uh, at the Uratomic Library Arcanum. Okay. Maybe the, the furry guy is calling someone else strange. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, okay, you got so a bike. For, uh, yeah, so we got a bike. I've got uh, with a sidecar. Hopefully, someone else can fit in the sidecar. Not like one of those like tiny, tiny sidecars. So don't want to. That's well, clown yeah. Situation. That's we're hoping that Drovo can go back with you in the sidecar. Yeah, but it's my bike. 
<laughs> and then we're going to, I'm going to head on, drive on over to the library of the Eurymedic. I hope I was yeah. pronouncing that correctly. Arcana. Yeah. So as you, um, he, he leads you outside and he unlocks a, a little, uh, a little garage door. That's kind of like, it's not an actual garage. It's like a shed with a, a pull down garage door and it has a padlock on it. He opens that up and wheels out the motorcycle and he says, uh, he, the key's already inside of it. He says, you turn the key, this one, you know, he goes, this one is for driving and this one is for stopping. He says, and the sidecar will hopefully keep you from falling over. Watch out for the major waterways. Uh, his order X was built as a, a city on a hill, but there are fountains and waterways everywhere now. Uh, so for the past 30 years, it's been this way. Waterways and trees came up where there weren't before. So just be careful. How intricate is this map I have? It's not very. I mean, it really very, just kind it of, it's got, like, so it's got the major the spot. <laughs> yeah. It's got the major crossroads and, uh, and the, and just the, the, the or origin and the destination. Okay. But it'll give you advantage on uh, navigating your way. So, um, well, I guess that would be, let's see, a survival check. Yeah. We'll have you do a survival check. At, with advantage, you roll twice and take the higher number. Okay, so this is uh, uh, interpreting ooh. the map and and driving your way down there. Okay, so I got five for the first roll. Okay. Oh God, six for the second okay. roll. Six plus two. <laughs> so eight. <laughs> yeah, so you're starting to get a little bit mad at Bentley because uh, his, you know, he sort of took his familiarity with his order X for granted. And uh, you you realize that there are probably cross streets on here that he, that he didn't mention, or that weren't written on the map. Um, so you get a little bit turned around. Uh, so make another check. Uh, Eleven. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and and with advantage again because of the map. Okay. Or eight. <laughs> okay, so with yeah, with with an eleven, you are able to get yourself back on track, and you, um, as you're driving down, uh, there there's one long kind of narrow street that you go down, and you see this, uh, you see a, a, a male and female couple. They look human, uh, they look like cuckoos, and they're they're kind of l l giving you the stink eye as you drive by, um, but but you don't don't have any. <laughs> they 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 just kind of narrow their eyes and nod a little bit at you when you drive by. Uh, it's not very polite, a... <laughs> guys. No. But after a couple of hours... Thought y'all were all about politeness. <laughs> yeah. After a couple of hours, you make your way there and you find the library, and it's a small building. Uh, there's a stream next to it, and um, and it's got it's a kind of a cobblestone road, um, and you you know, for a library, you expected it to be bigger, but it's not that big. Uh, and um, are you pull over your motorcycle. The, yeah, my double ahead. check the double check uh, the uh, well. I guess they're not like hieroglyph. What what'd you call the runes? What? what oh uh, yeah yeah right are, right the the yeah the the letters on the, the letters on the sign. Yeah. They they do they do match up with what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. So um, do you want to head inside? Yes. Let's go. Okay. All right, so the the door is unlocked and you step inside, and um, and uh, Chur Chur Dovir is sitting. At, Drovo is sitting there looking bored. You you do see a a, a bald uh, bald headed man uh, sitting there looking bored, and another man um, who looks really familiar to you, uh, kind of with his nose in into books, and he's got several books sprawled out on a table. Okay, and. Um... And if you, do you want to des describe yourself to uh, to Jose? Oh, um, oh, just kind of describe walk in. Uh, so I um, uh, I didn't print out my picture. She's not uh, saying this, right? She's just what, what? What exactly is she doing? She, she she's describing her character to you. Okay. Or and Wait, to the well, to the audience. 
Okay, so um, you said is I would die like average height, um, average, you know, cuckoo height, I suppose. Um, translucent ish blue skin. Hmm. Um, rather just like long me. ears. Yeah, for some weird reason, we both just happened to pick, like, I guess the same uh, uh, color wheel. <laughs> um, uh, lavender ish hair that's long put into braids because, you know, keep it out of the way. And uh, I have uh, straight-legged, wide-legged, um, like high-waisted pants, maybe more like reminiscent of uh, like the 30s that like paper boys would wear. Um, and uh, just kind of like a plain, f fairly plain uh, shirt and suspenders. Um, and uh, easy, easy to wander about in shoes. Mm. Everything about the outfit's pretty sensible. Like it's very, very straightforward. Uh, like I said, 1930s, I don't know, page boy sort of uh, clothing. So that way you can run around and get, it, get in and out of places pretty easily. I don't want to get caught on things. Uh, so, that, so that's Musette. All right. And, um, oh, I'm going to hide this here. There we go. And and uh, Jose, do you want to do you want to describe uh, Chur de Vere? Yes. So Chur de Vere is like he looks up from his book and he goes like, hmm. And he actually is a pure blood Eurydamek. So he also has uh, dark blue skin. Uh, he's got kind of longish hair. He's got a, a, a beard that's showing a little bit of gray at the bottom. Um, he's got the, the eyes with the red pupils and they're double pupils. Again, the Rethmex have that. Um, and he is probably in his mid two hundreds. <laughs> hey, you're live a long time. So, um, um, kind of a scholarly looking dude. Um, and I wear a kind of a Rethmex robe, which has the, a, a nice big, purplish looking uh, filigree with a uh, circle in the middle of my chest, which represents a circle of the Imagica. And um, I got gloves and boots, gloves and boots, All right. brown gloves and boots. And my tunic is also kind of like brownish looking. So at, at this point, uh, Drovo stands up and he says, ah, are, are you our contact from the Jericho organization? Well, are you uh, Drovo? I, I am. I'm, here I'm Drovo de Vere. Nice to meet you. My name is Musette. This is my I, brother, Chur de Vere. I kind of stand and look at you and I squint my eyes and I'm like, I know you. Ha ha haven't we met somewhere before? Um... It seems familiar. I'm not. Yes. I've, I've been traveling, though. Um, yes. I, I seem to recall something. It, it, it was almost. Yes, I seem to recall some some vision I've had. And does an ice cave sound familiar to you? Um. Sorry, so real fast, so this is a question for Ryan. Yeah. Um, so since I do remember everything, do I just automatically remember it? Yeah. I don't know if my yeah, character, like, am I, am I tired from having done so much traveling? Does it take a few <laughs> minutes to jog my memory? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that might be true, I, I would imagine. But you, you, uh, the, the, the memory of the, of the dream is pretty clear. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and I would imagine it could take a little while to put that together because you don't, you know, you don't expect to to, to recognize someone out of a dream. But well, but I mean, it's just it like is. like like True Devier has a has the advantage of that he's been, you know, in his own personal library for the past several hours since the dream <laughs> yeah. happened. And I've sure. been, let's see, I had, uh, let's see, I was embarrassed by my cousin, um, got pulled out of myself, got <laughs> yeah. moved into a new dimension, had yeah. to go driving on the. <laughs> and it's but, been like two weeks, right? For, and it's been like two weeks for her since the dream. No, no, it's only been a day. 
it's oh, only okay. been a day. I'm just saying yeah. that my character, like Musette, has already been through a lot. And so yeah. I'm not really sure how at the forefront of her brain she's thinking about yeah. this dream. Sure. Because already well, in the day, also almost cut himself to death with his, with his <laughs> this ribbon is sword. true. This is also <laughs> true. So, yeah. I got like a yeah. Band-Aid on my face. And I got myself <laughs> shaving. I, I, I... <laughs> Okay, sorry. Uh, getting back into okay, um, mm-hmm. ice cave. Hmm. And uh, Musette's gonna. I've got to think about it. I've got to think about, about it. that dream you described to me. Sure. Sorry, what? That's Rovo. He says, "Are you talking about that dream you described to me this morning?" Yes, I, 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 I swear I've I've seen. I, I think I've seen you before, Musette, but but this is something maybe for another time. We we still have to. I, I have to consider this for a moment. I remember there was a bird. There was a weird bird there as well. It's like I I, I feel like I've known you, but but welcome, welcome to the Arithmetic Library. Uh, we're very happy to have you here. You mean the fake seagull? What was yeah. up with that? Oh. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I remember now. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, it was. I, I feel though that okay. I it just it it feels like it ha- it might have happened a long time ago, or maybe it didn't. I'm not really sure. There were um, these but it was like creatures. Some, yeah. Anyway, take your time. You're probably tired from your trip. I mean. It's it's usually very hard for people from the fifth to uh, cross the Inovo into our um, second dominion, and there's a lot that you need to get acquainted here. So uh, we'll we'll be able to get into that later. Okay, I'll put that on the back burner. Uh, and yeah. and dr- at this point, familiar. Drovo says, "Well, this is very uh, fortuitous," and he uh, he uh, wrap he hands a, a cloth. Uh, sort of a package to to Chur Dovir and it says, "Can can you hold on to this?" Uh, and you know what it is. It's the it's the Boston Bowl. He, he says they, they they'll be wanting this at uh, the Jericho organization. He says, "No offense to you, uh, Musette, but the the bowl is not for the Jericho organization. It's for the Eurythmix. Uh That means." that it always will stay with one of us. It's not to be taken from away from us. Uh, And he says, okay, uh, I suppose, I suppose it's time to go. And he starts heading towards the the library door and he he looks back at uh, at Chardovir and he says, until we meet again in the first, if not before. And uh, he opens the door and uh, starts running out. Okay, wait, but Bentley said that I was supposed to meet Drovo and that Drovo was going to drive with me. Um, do, these do are you not, follow- this is not what I was told, guys. <laughs> do, you, do you follow him outside? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Hey, hey, Drovo, where are you going? <laughs> yeah. um, I was told that... You were supposed to. Oh, there we are. I was told that uh, we were going to be partners and moving on into the next uh, phase of the mission. Um, and, what's okay. going on? Yeah. Uh, so as you step outside, uh, you see your motorcycle is there parked um, where it was, um, but you also see out um, on the the bridge going across the the stream. You see a. a a strange musette. You don't recognize this thing at all, but it's a, it looks like a, a man in robes, but he it's got uh, praying hands for a head with arcs of electricity going in between the two hands. And, uh, and uh, Churdovir recognizes this thing as a Nolianak. And in your, your 200 years of life, you've unfortunately seen these things before. And they are, they're horrifying creatures. Uh, created as an army of the unbeheld and they were and uh, uh, like your conversation before you know they were supposed to have been kind of washed away in the first dominion when the goddesses took over uh, so it's strange to see one of them here uh, there are four uh, zenetic cultists um, around him 
and when you look to your right, you see uh, you see two more cultists by the motorcycle. Ooh. Oh no! And Drovo is running straight at the Nolianek, and he and he says, "Go, go with her." And I and I shout, uh, I shout to Musette, um, "A Nolianek, take cover! Let's go to the bike!" And I I. I instinctively draw my hand to my silken sword as I run towards a sidecar. All right. So at this point, everybody's going to roll initiative. 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 Ah, I got seven. And then the Nolianek uh, speaks out. It says, Drovo, you're here. I got 16. Okay. Uh, what's okay. my initiative? I didn't see initiative here. It's up at the top, um, near your armor class. Oh, okay. Initiative okay. plus two. So I got 16 plus two. That's 18. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, I got seven plus two. So I only got nine. Okay, so Musette has nine. Freaking useless. Uh, 18 for um, Turdovir. Mm -hmm. And I need to roll for Drovo. Oh God, I don't want to lose my brother. Is that a VW car? <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> nice. it looks a little old and rusty. Can't imagine how they brought that into the second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Piece by piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Smuggled in in jacket. Probably. Contraband. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. That would work. <laughs> it's got, like, welding marks all over the, the chassis because they brought it in piece by piece. Okay. So, uh, Drovo kind of surprises them by just screaming and charging, and he says says, get on the motorcycle, get away. And he runs straight up to the Nolianak and just uh, starts whipping at him with his silken sword. Drovo, no! So that's a, uh, let's see. Wow, he rolled high. Uh, 20, 23 to hit. So he got uh, seven damage. Against him. Against the newly neck? Yeah. That's my brother. And uh, he is going to... He's going to do a bonus action, unarmed strike, and he's going to kick him right in the right in the praying hand space. <laughs> newly neck's got nards. Yeah. So uh, that hit... And so he got uh, another five damage to him. Is Drovo that brownish looking guy, bald guy? Yeah. Yeah, he has. A, I think he's the only one right now with a label on him. Oh, I guess he's a half brother from me because he doesn't seem like he's a, a pure blood eredimac. Oh, he is. OK. Are, are you looking at the. He's uh, he's he's shirtless on the on the the thing, but right. He he shows up as brown, greenish looking. That's yeah, fine. well, he's he's your full brother. Okay. We we this is not uh, this one's not this one was more of a of a, a token that we found. It's not. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so Churdovir is next. All right, let me roll. I go like Drovo, no, and I go and I roll. So I, well, I, I, I pulled so out my sword. You're right? standing right at the entrance to the library, right behind Musette. Okay, and uh, I can want, walk. Yeah, you can. You've got movement. You've got uh, actions and bonus actions. Okay, so let me rush towards one, two, three, four, five. So as he's doing that, I'm going to attack one of the cultists by the bike so we can make okay. our escape. Okay. So you see me there and I'm going to draw my silken sword 
And uh, do I get to roll for attack? Yes. Okay. I've got a six. You rolled a six plus your attack bonus on the Silken plus Sword. My attack bonus, which is, what is that? My attack bonus. Which one is that? It, it, it says on the Silken Sword. Um, it'll say plus something. Give me a second. So you see Silken Sword range 10 feet, and it'll plus so, something. Um, uh, under actions. Okay, just bear with me. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing where that is. Uh, so on your character sheet, under uh -huh. the equipment? actions tab. Oh, actions. Equipment. Oh, yeah. I see, I see. Actions. Plus five. So I got a six plus five, that's 11. Okay, so you, uh, he you, he managed to duck just below the, the silken sword and it kind of slid right over his head and, and uh, cut his, his hair a little bit. Darn, I'm still not properly attuned to this thing. Okay, uh, next up is the Nolianak. And it just got beaten uh, quite a, a bit by Drovo, so it's not happy. Mm. It uh, It's going to uh, it's going to pull out uh, two knives and make two knife attacks against him. Uh So uh, that's 18 to hit with one of them. So that hits. And uh, so eight damage on the first one. Drovo is in bad shape already. Oh, man. My brother. And, uh, and then one more knife attack. I have a bad oh, feeling that about also, this. That also hits. Ah. So, uh, yeah, Drovo is is down. He's unconscious. Damn. Um. I think you're up, Musette. Do the other cultists do anything? Uh, it's not their turn yet. Okay. Yeah, Musette is next. Okay. Yeah, I was actually going to ask about um. The um the big guy. What was his name again? Uh, Anolianak. The the Anolianak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Anolianak. If you get if you uh, defeat him, does that do anything to the occultists? Like, do they like are they, you know, in cahoots where they all like share like a mind brain or? Thank uh, you. You yeah you don't that know or we don't know yeah. okay. Um. Okay. Well, I think that that is still because he's injured. I'm gonna go towards him and uh, try to get at him with my uh, with my dagger. The one. Well, hey, hey, Rob, who is that guy? In the, is that just a different cultist? That one in the upper left corner. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm assuming that I can use just go over the space four or five. Here we go. Oh, okay. diagonal, okay. fancy. Well, no, I went, I went over you four, and then I just oh, moved gotcha. to one's five. Okay. Um, but I know that yeah, I can attack from diagonal, right? That was something that we agreed on last time. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. And you can move diagonal. Okay. Oh, you can. Oh, I didn't. You, you can also move, move through diagonal. through spaces that are occupied by your allies. Oh, okay. So they'll they'll I just kind of let that. you squeeze by. <laughs> yeah. I figured. Okay. Um. So I am going to um. Stabby Stabby, the Nolianak. Okay. Uh, well, the, the Nolianak is still 10 feet away. He's still 10 feet away? Yeah, okay, he's wait. the one with the red dot on him. Oh, he's the red Dro dot. Yeah, so you'd be stepping over Drovo to do that, and you'd have cultists on both sides of you. Hold on. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. So even if I move and, over, that's my last also, move. Also, as Drovo went down, he said, get out of here now. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna turn, where am I? Ha ha, there we go, okay. I guess I will focus then on this occultist that, uh, that uh, Chodevere. Yeah, he's kind of in the way of our bike. He's in the way of our bike, yeah. Notice I already say our bike. <laughs> My bike. Your bike. 
Okay, nope. so I roll. Oh, God damn it, seven. Okay, what what are you attacking with your knife? Uh, my dagger, yeah. Okay, uh, seven total. Um, I I just rolled a seven on the twenty, and then and then and what then do I? You you go to your actions, and then the the dagger, and the so dagger. you'll see a plus something on there. Uh, under hit, hit slash DC. Yeah. Yeah, I have hit plus four. Okay, so uh, that's exactly what Drovo got last time, and that does mm-hmm. not hit. Yeah. So he sees you there on the other side, and he he kind of ducks out of the way of that one too. Oh. <sighs> this is not a good morning. <laughs> yeah. It's a rough morning. Okay, um, so it's the cultists' turn, uh, oh. and they um, two of these gather up Drovo, and they drag him back into the car and put him into the into the car with them. So, I'll, so Rob, can I move the? Oh yeah, I can. Okay, so I'll just kind of move them into the car. There. And is Drovo still on the map? No. I just hit him because he's in the car. Oh, okay. Oh, you see, you already did it. Okay, so those two cultists uh, take him into the car. And the, the Nullianax says, uh, says, get in. And so these other, these other ones also get in the car, getting re- ready to drive. And uh, this one is going to, let's see, it's going to attack Musette. Because she attacked it, it most recent, him most recently. Oops. I accidentally just clicked on his picture instead. Of, there we go. Okay, so he pulls out uh, a scimitar, like a long curved sword. And uh, he he misses. And then the other one uh, steps up here and also attacks Musette because he can't reach Trudovir very well. And that's, uh, let's see, 16 to hit. Does 16 hit? Your, is that, what's your armor class? Um, 14. Okay, so he hit. Uh, so he, you take uh, four damage. So you click on the um, the hit points there, and it'll there's a place where it says heal or damage. Okay. And uh, so you put in four damage, and then click OK, and it should. Uh, Huh. Okay. That motorcycle Sorry. looks really pixely and grainy compared to the to the other ones we what, have. Okay, so I go on to here and I hit four. Yes, you hit four in the damage thing, and then I think the you damage. click OK or something. Okay, like that. Okay, so I'm at yeah. five now. Okay. Five and out of nine. Gotcha. And then uh, yeah, so that's those two. The cultists have finished their turns. Uh, Drovo is going to make a death save. And that is a fail. Oh no! My yeah. brother! Okay, and then uh, Churdovir is next. Okay. So... I'm going to attack this occultist again because I'm trying to get him... Uh, to, I'm trying to protect Musette. Let's see... Let me see what I can do differently this time. Can I use... Well, you actually, you guys both had really bad luck. I mean, the, the, that yeah. was a really low roll. It was pretty low. Um, hmm. Can I do... I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to stick with my Silken Sword because it's got a plus five hit. So let me roll. Let me roll for that. And okay. I roll 20, right? Uh, and I yes. got... An eight plus five is 13. That hits. All right, finally. All right, so I slashed the guy with my silken sword. Okay, yeah, roll, so roll your damage. 
damage. So I think uh, it's D4. Is it plus four? Damage. 1d4 plus 3. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so roll that. Yeah, pyramid. Yep. Rolling. I got a 2 plus 4, 6 damage. Okay. So that hurt him quite a bit, but he's not down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, also, it, it helps... Just, just for your information, it helps sometimes if you see the, the little subsections of action, you mm -hmm. can look at which things you can do as bonus actions. If you click the little bonus action tab, some of your spells can work as bonus actions. I have... So, so when I click that, I see two weapon fighting. So that means I, if oh, I had okay. another weapon, I only have one. But if I had another okay. weapon, I could use two weapons. Yeah, yeah. And the same um, attack? Right, right. Okay. So, but it, yeah, I was thinking about if I was wondering if mage armor is a bonus action or if it's a full action to cast that. It might be too late in this battle to do it. Yeah. I only see actions in combat, two weapon fighting. That's all I have under okay. my... Okay. Oh. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. look at the at the spell itself and see if it says as an action or as a bonus action. I think sure. it's an action. So in mage armor? Yeah. It's one action. Yeah. That's yeah, one action. so that's something Casting you'd time. want to do like before combat starts, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought about okay. that, but then I was like, Musette's already been slashed, and I'm like, yeah. my brother's yeah. in the car, and I'm like, I, you know, I'm just gonna try to get this cultist. It you know. would, uh, yeah, it would end up using up your turn. Yeah. So the Nolianak, uh, he says, no witnesses, and he goes and gets into the car also. Okay. And then it's Musette's turn. Okay, well, the guy in front of me is injured, so let's go ahead and finish taking him down. Okay. Uh, with the dagger. This is the plus four. So the other well, occultist is just I could standing use a there? Pistol. What's that? Yeah, yeah, you have the pistol. The other occultist is just standing there? Well, as of right now, he is, I guess. Well, he, he did attack you. I mean, he's the one oh, that okay. hurt you. Okay, gotcha. I thought we're, yeah, okay. Yeah, but also, if the other guy's already injured, I would rather just, like, yeah. try and to this finish guy the is, person this that's guy, already yeah. injured. He, he got uh, slashed by Turdovir, right. so now he's facing him. He, he turned he turned toward Turdovir. Okay. Well, then, um, okay, so we're going to, I'm going to stick with the dagger. Okay. Ah! I rolled a five. Ugh. Okay. Five total? Five plus four is nine. Okay, yeah, that, that misses. Okay. <laughs> um, I see where they're switching us to a different squad. <laughs> 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 they're switching you from a different okay. squad because you suck! <laughs> I feel like we did a lot better the last time we tried this. <laughs> so, uh, this, this cultist is... Um, I'm just joking, by the way. He, he's hurt pretty badly, so he's taking... Uh, he's going to take a disengage action. And he's going to go up to here. Kind of abandoning his friend a little bit. Coward! He's, he, he's reeling. He's used to being a bully and getting... Uh, and uh, he deals the damage, but he's not used to getting hurt. And Coward. this one is going to attack Musette. Oh my gosh. Uh, he got a natural 20. <gasps> God damn. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. Oh, okay. Okay. I got splashed with blood over here. Ooh. Uh, he did the 14 scimitar. damage. <sighs> Musette! So Musette's unconscious. Oh, darn it. Okay. Well, uh... Uh, okay. I guess it's my turn. Um, yes. Oh, Dro well, first it's Drovo's turn. He's going to make another death save. And he passed one. But you, you guys don't know this, of course. But... He passed his death save? Yeah. He, he, you have to make, uh, you have to make a total of three successes. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Or somebody so, can just come and heal him, and then he's good. But that's gonna. First be thing I need right to now. do is start trying to move my character on your streaming window and go to the actual D twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Let me. Can I move this diagonally? Okay. And I'm gonna face him. I'm gonna step over Musette. Sorry, okay. Musette. Can I attack him from here where Musette is? Uh, yeah. It looks weird on the screen, but yeah, you can do that. Okay, well, I kind of like kick Musette out of the way. You're useless. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I am actually going to cast Mage Armor. Can I do that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to cast Mage Armor. So do I click cast here on the uh, yeah. D&D yeah. Beyond? And, and that increases your armor class. To, is it like plus five or I forget? Uh, it says here... Um, Mage armor spells. So spells. Where do I see what it does? Okay. You just click on it the says name. Duration eight hours. Uh, you touch a willing creature who isn't wearing armor and a protective magical force surrounds it until the spell ends. The target space becomes 13 plus its dexterity modifier. Right. So it's th what is your dexterity modifier? Is it plus My two? Dexterity modifier is plus two. So that puts your armor class at 15. 15. Okay. So I am I made myself like armored. Okay. Yeah. And that's my action. Yeah, and if you if you could look through your spells and see if any of them can be done as a bonus action or or if you okay. want to stop your and you have movement if you want or you can just end your turn there. Okay. Well, let me see. Everything is just one action. Okay. Yeah, this, All right. this guy's self, mage armor, magic missile, and floating disc. Wait, okay, no, no, so no, no. Wait, actually, wait. I got cantrips. No, yeah, they're are, are one any action. Of them, uh, any of them bonus no. actions? No, just okay. one action. All right, so Musette, um, is your, your hit points are, are below zero now, right? Does it show on your D&D Beyond screen the, the death saves? Okay, so. Um, oh wait, I haven't been putting sorry, anything. I hadn't in gone my... back. Yeah, I hadn't gone back and done that. So what did I need to subtract this time? Uh, fourteen. But oh, it, it'll Jesus just it, it'll just put you at like zero, and and it'll bring up the death save screen. Okay, so death ha have, saves. Have I been hit okay. so far, Ryan? I haven't been hit, right? No. So roll a twenty-sided die. Okay. I only have eight hit points. Jesus, I'm a weakling. Well, it's okay. level one. I've got a ten. Yeah. Okay, a ten, a ten and above is a pass. So you put that okay. in a success. A success, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I got uh, a fourteen. Is that a you success? just you only do it the one time for this. Just turn. the one time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and the the uh, hurt cultist is going to move over, kind of here behind his friend. And he's just waiting. And um, the other one is going to attack Cherdovir with his sword. Aha! Uh -huh. I have. He got a mage armor. He got a nine, so he it it uh, kind of bounces off your mage armor. Nice. Okay. Okay. And now it's uh, Cherdovir's turn. Okay, and I'm like. You Menji Kerr have a taste of my silken sword. And I'm gonna roll attack with my sword. And I got a 10 plus, uh, plus what? <coughs> so, so I got a 10. And uh, what was that again? Uh, mm -hmm. And you, your, your silken sword attack bonus or? Oh, silken sword attack bonus, which is, uh, let's see. It is a plus five. Okay, so 15 hits. 15. Okay, so I slash him, and now let's do a 1d4 plus three for damage, and yeah. that is three plus three, six damage. Okay, so now he is as hurt as the uh, as the other one. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, and next is... Musette. Uh, so make another death save. 
You need to get, you want to get a 10 or higher for a success. A 17. All right. So that's another success. Okay. That's two out of three. Okay. Okay. Um, this cultist, he's uh, looking a little shaky, but he's, uh, he's mad and he wants to, he wants to, he wants to fight. So he's going to attack Chertovir again. He got, he got a knot. So oh, he's, uh, he's, he's hurt pretty badly. I think that there's uh, some blood in his eyes and he swings wide this time. Doesn't even hit at all. Okay. Well, all right. That's and, my benefit. Uh, the other one uh, moves down here. Mm -hmm. And seeing that you're fighting the other guy, he thinks, so oh, maybe I could do this without getting hurt. And he attacks Chertovir. Okay. Uh, 16. So that's a hit. So he got a uh, five damage. Okay. Five damage. Let me take that out from my. DND Beyond, so so I type in five and click damage, right? Yeah. So I'm down to three hit points. Ooh. Uh, okay. Am I still strong enough to attack back? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, well, I kind of wince. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So I kind of wince and I, I, I focus on my silken sword. I roll... And I got seven plus seven plus five. That's uh, twelve. That that hits. Uh, who is which one are you attacking? Oh, um, the one that's attacking me from the side. The one who just hit me. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. the 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 one diagonal to you. Or yes. The other one. Okay. Yes, the one that's spewing blood everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Ro roll your damage. And I'm going to roll my damage, and it's going to be 1d4 plus 3. Come on, baby. And I got 2 plus 3, 5. 5? Yes. Okay, that guy is dead. Yeah! Uh, and I curse at him in Eurythmic. Okay. So um, at this point, you see the, the, uh, the car kind of pulls out and starts driving away. Okay, what about Drovo? Uh, Drovo's in the car with them. No, oh, they're driving Drovo away. Yeah. Um, um, and so, M Musette, it's, it's uh, your turn. Make another death save. You have to pass three. Fifteen. Yay. All right, I so you I got are... These earlier. <laughs> You're unconscious, but and uh, but you're still unconscious, but you're stable, so you're not bleeding to death. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, this guy is going to attack Drovo. And I have three hit points, so <laughs> let's hope yeah. that this has a good ending. Yeah. He uh, he swung and he missed. Awesome. All right, so uh, I, I'm going to use my sword. It's been working great, and I'm kind of desperate because my brother is just left in the car. Musette is, like, passed out on the floor, and I'm going to be, like, rolling my sword, and I got a 10 plus a 5. I got a 15, so I hit him, right? Uh, Yeah. 15, yep. and now let's roll for damage. 1d4 plus 3. And I've got two, two plus three, five, five damage. Okay, he is dead. Ah, taste the yeah. metal of my ancestors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Musette, I helped Musette up, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and so you've got the motorcycle there with the keys still in them. Or I don't know, did M Musette, did you take the keys with you? Yeah. I left him in there. Okay. I didn't so the think keys... that anything was going to get this exciting. <laughs> yeah, so the, the keys like are said, still jet in lag. the ignition. Musette, are and you good enough to drive? She's, in, she's you unconscious. You can drive just this <laughs> once. Okay, just this so you're, once. You're she's unconscious, unconscious so, Yeah, so she okay. doesn't respond. <laughs> All right, so I guess I, I, I pick her up very carefully. I put her in the sidecar, and I get into the bike, and with 
with very focused resolve, I, I, I try to, I turn the bike on and I try to follow the car, but it's kind of like the bike is kind of going like, rrr, 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 cause I don't know how to drive it very well. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so the car is starting to lose you in the distance. Make a survival check. Survival check. Yeah. Survival check. So roll 20 sided die and add the survival bonus down at the that's bottom of your skills. Plus two. So that's, uh, I got a four plus two, six. Yeah, you, the car lost you. Oh, I lost yeah, the car. Yeah, and, and uh, you know that you're supposed to go to wherever the Jericho organization is, but you don't know where that is. Hmm. So I guess I'm just kind of driving and looking at Musette and seeing if she's waking up, huh? Yeah. But she she's not. I mean, she's unconscious, but stable. It seems like she's going to need some kind of healing. So can I turn back and go back to the library so I can care for Musette? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. I guess otherwise I'm just going to be driving around the city, you know. Yeah. Luckily, this has a sidecar, so I'm not falling down. Uh, in your equipment, do you have a, a, a healing kit? Healing kit. Let's see. What do I got? Let me check my equipment here. Equipment. I have... Uh, I don't think so. I have a backpack, blanket, candle, clothes, ink, rations, small knife, tinderbox, and water skin. Okay. Uh, make a uh, make an investigation check to see if there's one in the library. Okay, investigation check. Yeah. That's a plus five modifier. Yeah. So let me try. Where did my dog? Oh, there it is. So roll 20 plus five. Yeah. Oh, I got a 15 plus five, 20. Awesome. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So with a 20, uh, not, there is a healing kit in the library, but you also remembered uh, in the uh, Drovo's things, uh, he had another healing potion in just in case you mangled yourself with your silken sword. Uh, <laughs> so you can... Um, so if you want to, you can you can give that to Musette. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna give her that potion. Uh, so what okay. kind of potion is it? It's a it's a, a regular healing potion. So you roll two d four, so two pyramids uh, plus two. Two d four plus two. So that's first d four is three. Okay. Plus two. That's five plus four. You said. Yeah. Nine. Okay, so Musette, you get nine hit points back, and you're conscious again. You wake up kind of spluttering. Somebody's poured a healing potion down your throat. You're back in the uh, library, and you see uh, you see uh, Churdovir looking down at you. What were those things? That was a Nullianek. Um, he, he's supposed to be extinct but my brother was talking to me about a new cult that's been coming up and and that they, there were rumors of a newly enact coming back so this is not good this is something we need to get to the bottom of so where is this jericho headquarters we need to uh gather up a force and investigate Well, I was told to go through Drovo. Um, can we possibly go back to the 77 Wonders of the Amahica? I with Bentley. Do you know how to get there? Do you have a map? I have the map they gave me to get here, so I would just go backwards. Maps but it's work two both hours. ways. Yes, yeah. uh, but it'd be two hours out of the way. Um, can hours. we? Is there any way that we can figure out how to uh, how to follow Drovo? Unfortunately, I've I've lost the car. I uh, I tried not... getting in the bike and and they I lost them. I I don't know where they've gone to. Are um, we not in a library? We are, and I do have the Boston Bowl. Um, I guess it would. It might be able to give us some insight on what's going on or 
or what uh, who these people are. I guess I could I could use the Boston Bowl. It seems like that's what the Jericho Squad was interested in, possibly to to gleam into what's going on with the situation. So uh, let me let me get that Boston Bowl, and I kind of take it out from my bag, and I lay it on the table, and I focus. Okay. Um, and I, I think I had changed the way the Boston Bowl works because after reading a Magica again, I didn't like the what the you know what I had for what it does, okay. for what it does to you when you try to use it. It didn't make any sense. So, so it, uh, let's see. It's a prophetic piece of equipment. It has forty-two multicolored balls that kind of work as little pixels. And uh, if you focus on it, it kind of like the balls just kind of start jumping in the bowl. And they jump so hard that eventually that mix of b colored balls starts making an image. I don't see it in your inventory. Well, Drovo gave it to me. No, I know you. Yeah. Oh, that's probably why. We we just need to add it. I'll I'll add it here really quick. Sorry, real quick. Since we're doing housekeeping, I still have the death saves failure success oh yeah so what, if you if you go in there and you add uh the healing how much was that seven points nine nine okay you add the nine it'll it'll put you back up again and take those away and and so i still have three hit points so i'm 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 hit bad right yeah uh so maybe i should try to do some sort of uh oh, healing changes. Can I use the healing kit in the library to heal myself? Um, yes. Well, no, the, the healing kit is only for bringing people back from being unconscious and stabilizing. It doesn't actually give you hit points back. Okay, so it's like smelling yeah. salts. Yeah. Um, so make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Where's wisdom? That's plus four. So yeah. I roll 14 plus four. That's 18. Okay. Is it plus four? It might be higher even. Is, are you looking in the saving throw section or the wisdom section? I was looking in the wisdom section. Yeah. Oh, so no, I was looking at saving throws. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's okay. plus four. Yeah. I see, no, I, you're right. Uh, um, so when you got 15 plus four? 14 plus four. Oh, okay. So, yeah, with an 18... Um, when you look into the bowl, uh, the first thing you see is the last, uh, seems like it's probably the last thing that Drovo saw in the bowl when he, when he used it. Um, the stones spin around and create a, a, an image of him running up to the Nullianac and getting uh, slashed and, uh, and then everything turns black. That's not much of a prophetic thing. That's what just happened a while ago. Well, that that was prophetic for him. He saw that before yeah. he went. Yeah. Okay. So. So then, uh, then the the they they spin around again. Okay. Do I do another wisdom? Does it need to be reacclimated to Chirdevir? I'm uh, not really sure how it works. Not yeah, not not this one. Anybody can use it. Um, okay. So it, so it uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. So it, if you it, want to use it again, you can see the next thing. Okay. So I'm focusing really hard. And is it going to be another saving throw for wisdom? Yeah. Okay. So this time I've rolled a 13. Okay. Or that's 17. Yeah. So you're, you're good. Uh, you focus on, on it. Um, you see them uh, driving away from the the Uretimek Kesperit, uh in the in the car, and uh, you see uh, the 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 purple eye or the 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 red the red symbol with the eyes, mm -hmm. kind of fills the whole bowl. So and, uh, and covers up the image of the the car driving away. So do I recognize that as the Zenetics or something? Uh, you recognize it from your dream. Oh, the, uh, the eye that said, uh, yeah. don't disturb the aboriginals, right? Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay, well that doesn't tell me anything. Um yeah. Do I do I try using it one more time? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. Rolling another wisdom. Two okay. plus four, that's six. Okay. Uh you take one point of uh you 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 get kind of a a raging headache and okay. you take one point of, of psychic damage. Okay. Um, but what you see in there, uh, you see a log cabin, okay. uh, a, lo a, a log house. Uh, it, this doesn't look like, uh, this looks like it's not from this world. From this what? And, uh, and you see some people in your, from your dream. Uh, you see, you see the, the guy with the weird looking hand on his back. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see, um, the 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 redheaded woman with the knife um and they are uh and you and you see gunfire outside okay. of the cabin so musette is next to me she, she can see ralph too right in the bowl uh yes okay <laughs> okay so hey, those uh those people look familiar too and you also you also kind of recognize that uh, it looks like a northern climate um, from the Fifth Dominion. It looks like Fifth Dominion architecture and and uh, environment. Okay. okay, but I don't see anything like the Nolianak or my brother, right? No. Okay, so it's kind of hard to make the connection of finding out where they're taking my brother, but I guess I could. I could say that, uh, do you recognize any of these people, Musette? Do you know where this might be? It looks familiar. Um, and the architecture does look like it's something from the, uh, from the fifth dominion. Hmm. The fifth. Yeah. I haven't been there in years. Um, I mean, maybe we're supposed to see and when maybe we're supposed to find these people. Uh, in order to find your brother. Because hmm. we're only getting fragments of what's going on. Maybe by trying to find more fragments, we'll be able to figure out easier. Yes. Well, I think right now what we should do is try to go to the Jericho headquarters and see if they know more about what's going on. Okay. Yes, we should definitely report back. Okay, well, let's get let's get to the bike and go to that seventy-seven wonders of the Imagica. There, there is one more healing potion in Drovo's things. Yes. So before that, I only have three hit points. What about that one point of psychic damage? Does that count as a, a damage point for my character? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I have to hit one damage. So I'm down to two. Yeah. I'm kind of wobbly here, and I'm like exhausted from the Boston yeah. Bowl. So, I take that uh, that that potion. So, how many points? You, do and I another want? thing that you can do is, uh, if you guys want to take a short rest, you can rest for an hour and use a hit die to heal yourself. I think I'm 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 too you know hot headed and about this, and I think I just want to take the potion and go as quickly as possible. Okay. So what do I roll? 20? Uh, two, 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2. 2d4. That's first one. 2 plus 4. That's 6. Plus 2, 8. Yeah, so you're healed up all the way. Okay, so I'm back to 8 points. <laughs> um, let me go ahead and do that. Okay, excellent. Hey, and your mage armor stays on for eight hours, so it's still good. Right. So for the next two hours of trip, I still have my mage armor, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to the bike, to the Jericho headquarters. Let's head on out. Let's do it. All right. Um, so you now you have the map, um, and you have a you have a pretty good idea of where this is um, because you've. You've uh, you've known Isordorex for a good hundred and fifty years, um, mm -hmm. and it's changed a, a bit be in the last thirty years because of the uh, the rivers from the goddesses and the and the new trees and stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, people have started building around the rivers instead of stop trying to stop them. Uh, but 
you still uh, you still know your way around and you're able to to make your way back. Um, so after about an hour of traveling, um, you start to get to the area Musette where you saw uh, the the couple um, that were giving you the stink eye on the road. <laughs> Uh, you exit uh, their make house. A, yeah, make a perception check. Perception check. Perception. My perception is plus four. Yeah. So Both I got. Us? So who's driving, me or her? Uh, pro- me. Well, yeah. You, you guys. You tell me. I guess who's who's driving and who's well, navigating. I thought I was feeling better, so I was going to go back to driving. Okay, I'm just giving you notes from the side guard, like, oh yeah, I know, you know. Uh, there's a bridge here. Or there's like a shortcut there. And I'm looking yeah. at the map. I'm your co-pilot. So and, yeah. So you're not going to get lost with b- b- between the two of you and the map. It's pretty easy right. to, to make your way back. It just is time consuming. So Musad, you do the perception check. Okay. Well, I got 17. Um, what? It, where's? It's um, uh, perception is in your list of skills down the underneath. Middle there. The oh, there it is. Throws. Plus two. Sorry. Okay. Plus yeah. two. So uh, 17 plus two is 19. Okay, uh, so you got a 19, and Jose, what did you... Oh, can I roll again? I don't oh, remember. No, I didn't hear what you got the first time, I guess. Uh, I think it might have been a, a 12 or something. Okay. I don't remember. Well, um, I already got... I grabbed it, so... Well, Musette, with a 19, uh, you see that same couple uh, in the distance, probably about 100 feet away. Uh, there's one of them on each side of the road, and they seem like they're sort of dragging something between them across the road. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of lean over to Trudevier and say, "Hey, those uh, those people they gave me a they gave me a strange feeling when I was driving down, um, and the fact that they're out on the road again, I'm not sure why they don't have anything better to do with their lives besides hang out by the road. Um, but I feel that's a bit suspicious and a bit strange. Hmm. Well, you know, here in Azurdorex, um, is that normal? Some people don't like strangers, and um, unfortunately, they can be a little uh, reserved. I I don't know who those people are. Mm. Okay. So well, we'll so, what do you guys want to do? Um. Uh, can I look closer to see what they're dragging? Um, that was actually going to be my question as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, so are you are you still driving or are you stopped? Uh, no. Um, and since there's so many, like, I'm assuming since there's so many uh, water features around, there's a lot of uh, plant life. So is it possible for us to kind of like stop behind um, or near a tree? And check our okay. surroundings. Kind of like try yeah. to figure out, you know, try to like stop. Um, okay. I mean, I'm okay, not so really you, sure, or is it just completely yeah. like blank road? No, no, it's, if you look at roll 20, Rob's got the map up there. What if you um, slow down the oh, bike oh, yeah. and you ask me who those people are and, you know. Uh, okay, sorry. I didn't realize that we had moved. Yeah. So, right. Okay, let's uh, let's go over here behind this big bush. Uh, to the right. I don't know where my person is. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Well, yeah. Where where Chidavir is is fine. So where do we okay. see the people? Are they in here too? You, you, yeah, down at the way down, down at the here, bottom of the map. This orange. Hey, Ryan, right? you've got your whole desktop shared instead of just the program. Oh, oh did I? I? Okay, I'm gonna fix that. Okay, sorry. No, that's my fault, guys. We're okay, deep. so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stop and is yeah, it's Ryan, I guess. Is there any way that either of us has any sort of um stealth that we can kind of go from tree to tree um well, and see um, what they're doing? What yeah, we're still pretty so shaken make, up yeah, about make a, make a stealth check, both of you. And so you're in uh you probably pulled a, uh, pulled over far enough away that they didn't uh, they didn't really notice you. Stealth check. Okay, okay. I'm plus two, so okay, I got so a one. One plus I got eight. a thirteen. I guess I plus trip on a branch two. and fall flat on my face. So 15. you got so Muse got a fifteen. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, Trudovir, um having uh, having been a little tired and beat up. 
uh, was trying to sneakily get out of the uh, get out of the sidecar, and he kind of uh, tripped and fell into the bushes. Oh damn! And uh, and so and uh, ah, curses! You you hear one of them, and they're talking in gloss. So uh, Jose, only you under only Churdovir understands them. Uh, but one of them says, "What's that?" Um, I roll into Man. the bushes. That must have been okay. a really loud fall into the bushes, dude. Because, <laughs> like, I don't know, I feel like that's a pretty far distance, but okay. A big guy. I'm like six foot tall. And it starts uh, walking up towards you. Uh oh. Um, and. Oh, are these guys like, two. like, 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 uh, robbers? Highway robbers? They they look well, like um, they look like poor. Uh, are they armed? They, they are. Yeah, they they have they look like oh. they have crossbows and swords, and oh. uh, they um, on closer inspection, it looks like they had a chain draped across the road. Oh, so it was a good thing that we stopped. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, darn. So I, I don't know. Is it my turn? Well, what do you? Yeah, what do you want to do? Do you want to start? If you start combat, we'll do initiative. Ah. Um, uh, can I try to see what what they want? Can I just come out from the bushes, put my hand on my sword, and say, "Yeah, what do you want from us?" Are Are you speaking in English? Well, I'm speaking in their language because okay. I know how to speak so their language. So you're speaking in gloss. So they. Gloss. Um, yeah, so they, um, you you step out and they they kind of jump back a little bit and and uh, draw their swords. Oh, great! And they say it's it's her with the motorcycle. Rich people going up to the fancy Eretimek Kasparit oh, on rich great. people business. Great. So we uh... we think that a proper toll for using our road would be that motorcycle. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. So, so did they see Musette? So, yeah, they saw the bike, right? So they yeah, saw. Yeah, they Musette, saw when Musette I was is... on the way out. When I was gotcha. on the way out to go and see you, they saw. So, me and then... so I tell them to to go about their business and and get out of the way, and I draw my sword as well. These people, I don't, I don't imagine they're very smart. Really, they see someone with like a whole bunch of musical instruments, and they're like, "Oh, that person must have a lot of money." <laughs> like, come on, y'all. Well, that's probably my tunic, says the Rethemek from the library. I have uh, yeah. a very and, fancy and they, looking tunic. It, well, and they do, they they do see your silken sword, and they've heard legends about your Rethemeks and their silken swords. So they kind of step back a little bit, and they say. Um, Where's the woman who was driving the motorcycle? Okay. Um, um, and I say, so I'll, I'll, I'll have to step forward. And I say, that's none of your business. And I do have intimidation, right? So how does that yeah. work? Yeah, you just roll an intimidation check. Okay. So it, yours is minus one, it looks like. Oh, damn. Because I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nerd. I'm a librarian. It's like I'm trying yeah. to be intimidating. Yeah. So let me roll that, and I got <laughs> a one oh, minus so one zero. Oh. Minus one zero. So they um, they they okay. kind of Darn. they kind of see that uh, that you've been through some stuff uh, today, yeah. and they uh, they they they're feeling a little emboldened, like maybe they've got a shot at you. Okay. So they start they start heading up up towards you. Great. They're they're kind of walking slowly. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna just go ahead and step forward. Um, okay. Because this is my this is my bike. Yeah. Why does everyone want to take my bike? <laughs> it's been such well, a long day. It's a bit ridiculous. I'm right um, behind you. So I guess I can ask. Um, I don't know. I want to know what their problem is. Quite honestly, it's like okay. why 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 have y'all been uh, why have they been. Um, following do they not is there not a lot of traffic that comes through also what need what actually no why do they need a bike if they just hang out on the road all the time anyway well it's a toll <laughs> yeah they they look at each tolls? other and they recognize the word bike 
but they don't understand any of the other stuff that you said and the, they say they say in in gloss yes give us the bike Musette, they want the bike. They weren't, they're they trying to rob us. They say that they want some toll, and they demand that the toll is the bike. So, no. who are these guys? Uh, I guess, can you translate then to them that that's not, the, yeah, that yeah, is, I, that is out of the question. I, I tell back in gloss to the guys, that is out of the question. Now step aside. Okay, make another uh, intimidation check. Okay. Hopefully better I've than got, a zero. <laughs> I've got a nine plus minus one, so that's eight. Okay. And they better. will do um let's see. Insight, yeah. So they, they got a ten. Um, oh. uh, so they're 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 still seeing that you're a little bit shaky and they don't they don't want to get in a battle exactly they're kind of hoping to just kind of hamstring your your bike and and uh and 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 rob your your remains mm. so so okay. they well, kind of have... they say well we've got you uh we've got our crossbows pointed right at you what have you got to give us like musette this this is not good they're they're pointing their crossbows at us and they're asking if there's anything else we can give them apart from the bike. Um, Personally, I would say I'll give them, <laughs> I'll give them a taste of my sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, what I feel like we should do to these Manji curs. Okay. Hold they on. say, well, Is you just stop right there. Thing? Then we're not, don't step any closer. Hold on. Let's see. Let's where where these do I find? Fools. Oh wait, here we go. Let's see. I've got. I'm looking to see what I have. Um. Okay. I feel like I. I feel like I probably need these things. Uh. So. Uh. Since you guys keep talking about intimidation, mine is plus two. Yeah. Um. But also my um, persuasion you... is plus two. Maybe we could just use persuasion. Did you ever equip the Klee Liar? No, did I not? Probably not. I don't know. Hold on. It gives you a huge amount of abilities and stuff. Okay. Like you, when you have that, you can fly. You can do all kinds of crazy what? stuff. What? That's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hold on. Klee Liar. Oh, wait, here, active. active? Yeah, and I, yeah. it needs to be attuned also. Okay. Which it is because you spend an hour with it at lunchtime. Okay. Uh, Russ, did you add the Boston Bowl to me? Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so then, them. what do I? Oh, one. Okay. And then, do I hit manage equipment or? Um. Yeah, and you should see it there with a check mark next to it, and you just check it to to say that it's. I think That's you have it on box. you now, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, da -da. Yeah, it's worth okay. checking it out to it see what it can do. It says you can do fly, invisibility, levitate, protection from evil, good, stone shape. Okay, wall of fire, wind wall. Um, yeah, and all of those use ooh. a certain use a, a charge on it, and you've got uh, it looks like eight charges per day. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's... Ah, oh, darn. Because this guy is standing... This orange guy is standing really close to a water. So if I was able to put up that wind wall and we could kind of like push him into the water. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how big that river is or if it's just like a little creek or what. Uh, it's like it looks on there. It, it is kind of like a little creek. Okay, so that's useless to me. <laughs> Well, he might not know how to swim. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, okay. water. My nemesis. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Churduvir 
If I'm able to fly and distract them, are you able to get up close enough to just kind of get them out of our way? I should be we able sh- to. Yeah. We no should problem. actually, though, probably not stray too far from the motorcycle, so that way we can just hop back on and get go back on our way. Because if we keep on getting farther away from the motorcycle, how do we know that we could try they that? Yeah. Steal it? Yeah, because they're too, they're really far down the road, so they're keeping their distance from us. Uh, they have crossbows pointed at us, though. So, I guess we could they're we about try thirty feet on the, away from you. Yeah, could we try getting on the bike and just kind of like ram through them as a moving target? Uh, yeah, they've moved away from the chain, so they can't make you that to trip you, and uh, you know, like the Ewoks. Right, right. So yeah. they're not holding the chain on either side. Right. So yeah, they were kind of advancing on you with their crossbows. Do you want to try and make a, a run for it, Musette? Uh, I think that that is the best option. Alrighty. We can try doing that. I still have my mage armor, but if we can avoid going into a lengthy battle with these guys. We don't have, we don't have time for this. Okay. All right. Well, we'll um, even if it's not really a battle per se, we'll roll initiative just to see if they can make it, you know, to their, or to see what the, what they do and in what order and stuff. Okay. Okay. Do okay. I get to, do I get to go into the bike? Uh, yeah. So they they start seeing you headed towards the bike and uh, and they they aim their crossbows and then we'll roll initiative. Okay. Because I still have mage armor, even if they attack me. So I jump on the bike and I go like, vroom, vroom, vroom. We'll jump on. Well, you know, it'd be better for me to be driving because if you need to use your sword while you're in the uh, sidecar. Ah. Oh. Because I don't have the okay. I don't have the sword. Sure, sure. So you, you do have jump. a gun, though. That oh, is you got true. A gun? <laughs> That's even better. Gun, They've got crossbows for God's sake. So sorry. <laughs> Ah! Gank these fools. <laughs> okay, roll roll your initiative. Both of us? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh 13. I've got okay. Oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, oh, I got a 20. Oh, Hi. wow. So and and with initiative it's you still add your bonus to that, so it'll be 20 uh, something. Initiative uh Plus two, so twenty-two. All okay. right. I've got fifteen. Oh, fifteen. Okay. Uh, plus the after the plus two. All right. So, um, sure, Devere, obviously you're first with the twenty-two. So you said you're going to run over and jump and hop on the bike or hop into the sidecar. Yeah, I guess. So, so how are we going to do this? I guess it would be better for me to. The 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 keys are in the bike, and I rolled twenty-two, so. <laughs> How about uh, I jump in the yeah. sidecar because I don't okay. know how to drive that thing very well. Okay, and you can do that in, with your movement. Uh, you're close enough to it that you still have your full action and bonus action if you want to do something from inside of the sidecar. Uh, well, I got my ribbon sword in my hand, but they're 30 feet away, so there's nothing I can do. I could, I could try. You, you have spells also. Okay. Um, so or, or I... you can hold your action with a ribbon sword. So when you hold an action, you say, well, you know, I'm not going to, like if you had a gun, say, I'm not going to fire until I see them walk out into the open and then I fire and then it it just triggers as soon as that happens. So that's how how hold actions work. How about this? I see them, I see one of them kind of rush towards the chain Mm -hmm. and I I cast Ray of Frost trying to slow him down. Okay. Well, they they haven't started running or doing anything like that yet. They just kind of looked back and forth because it's not their turn. Okay, so all right. So I'm waiting for Musette to to start driving, and I hold my action. Okay, and what? And your action is Ray of Frost that you're holding. Uh, the sword. The sword. Okay, you're, so you're holding the sword. I can slash at them if we're moving, right? I can try until one of them gets in range. Okay, right, so you're right. kind of out on the uh, out on the um, the sidecar like Mad yes. Max, swinging yeah. your sword, getting it ready to hit somebody. Yeah. Okay, uh, Musette me. is next. Okay. So, um, I roll again then, right, for 
yeah. action? Uh, well, what do you want to do? Yeah. Well, I gotta. I want to get on and start driving. We're just gonna okay. floor it. Okay. And uh, and drive past them. Jeez it. Yeah. Um, a motorcycle speed is how how fast do you want to go? I mean, it, it's a it's a bumpy kind of cracked up road, so you have to be a little careful. But it it has a sidecar like he like Bentley said, so it's not going to fall over. But if it shakes too much or gets into a rut or something, you could like separate the sidecar or something like that. I could fall off of it. Yeah, but if you get going like 30 miles an hour, that's pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, I think 30 is really probably the safest okay. that you could go, especially on this cobbly looking road. Okay. So you, let's see. I don't know if Rob, if I can move all of this, let's see. Oh, you Rob can do it. Okay, so I would say you can get past them all the way down to the bottom around where the where those trees are. <clears throat> the trees, to, the two trees at the bottom of the map where they were hiding. So you okay. you uh, you start driving over the top of the chain. And uh, Jose, as as you uh, as you drive by, do you want to whip the one on the in the the woman in blue on the right side? With your with your sword sure i don't see anybody right now um they're hiding no they're you, you can't see them oh, they're on either see. side okay. of the road there's one in oh. red and one in blue i do see them but the bikes are already way past them like a bunch of squares right, right yeah but you were you had a held action to hit somebody with your sword when they get right, in range right yeah so, so you I, drove by you had the option to to, to gotcha. swing at one of them Right, so I'll be like, "This will teach you not to mess with us," and I kind of, okay. like, you know, okay, I, I uh, roll, roll to hit. Can I try to hit them with the hilt of my sword instead of the blade? Because it's like I don't want to kill them. I don't. Yeah, it would be hard to reach with that. Okay, so I guess I'll try to go for like a swipe, and okay. I roll ten okay. plus uh, plus what's the thing on the? I think it's is it plus four? I think right. Yeah. Plus five hit. So that's uh, 10 plus five, 15. Okay. And now let's roll for damage. 1d4 plus three. Ah, darn it. Fell down. Yeah, that hits. Okay, so damage. Three plus three, okay. six. I hit him for six damage. Okay. Yeah, so she she screams and throws her crossbow up in the air, mm -hmm. uh, and you see the uh, the man running across the road uh, to get to her. Dude, I just hit a lady. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were and, trying uh, to and, take and, our and bike. And you're, you're able to get away. Cool. Yay. Okay. So after that, uh, after that incident, uh, you drive for another hour, and uh, you're able to pull up to the 77 Wonders of the Imagica. Yay. All right. We've made it to the headquarters. And the, the garage, the, uh, the little shed door is still open, so you, if you want to wheel the bike in there, you can do that. Okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll go, and I'll wheel the bike back in there. Okay. Uh, the polite thing to do the correct okay. thing to do yeah and and if you um, close, we'll close the door the you can door. we'll close the door yep and, and then, lock it and then uh head back into the uh into the to the shop okay so you come in uh and uh, and bentley stands up from sitting behind the counter at the shop uh and you can see that there's a that uh, the lion king is paused behind him on a vcr <laughs> and he, he says, "Oh, you made it!" And uh, and he and and as uh, the two of you walk in, he looks at uh, Chertovir and he says, "This man is definitely your Etemek, but I think you brought the wrong guy." Well, the right guy uh, ended up getting kidnapped, and we lost what? the trail. Yes, my brother so... Drovo was kidnapped by a Nulianak, and I got a feeling you guys might know more about what's going on. I am Chudovir. I am Drovo's brother. I brought the Boston Bowl. I'm Bentley Widget. Bentley, sorry about the blood on the bike, man. 
Blood on the... Wow. Uh, I expected this to go a lot smoother. I'm sorry, Musette, for your first mission. This sounds That's... very, uh, very harrowing. It was. Well, we, we, we would like to try to uh, find his brother, but we, uh, he used the, uh, the bowl to, to see possibly into the fifth dimension. We're not really sure. Hmm. So you brought the bowl with you? I did, yes. Yes, I have the bowl right here. Wow. And it will remain with me. I, I, I understand. Uh, well, would you like to stay with us at least temporarily? Maybe we could help you get your brother back. I think that would be a good use of my, of my skills um, to try to fight this menace and try to get to the bottom of what's going on. And I, I do want to get to my brother as quickly as possible. So let's go and, and, and do this. Do, do you, I know that uh, your brother um, Drovo was a, a, a master of of the uh, Eurythmic fighting arts. Are you as as, uh, as good at fighting as him? I guess time will tell, but I've already had the good chance to uh, attune myself to my ribbon sword, and I already had a chance to practice. Again, that blood on the sidecar, you know, that person's not going to bother us anymore. <laughs> who, were the, who were these people that, uh, that attacked you? They were cultists. They... Uh, they were driving a, 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 a strange vehicle. And um, like I said, there was a Nolianak and they've, the Nolianak. Yes. And it had slashed my brother and, and they kidnapped him. So I'm very concerned. I have not seen or heard about a Nolianak for 30 years. I know it's, it's strange. It's, uh, they should not be here. They're creatures of the unbeheld. So I fear that there is some, Something is afoot. This definitely merits investigation. He says, well, uh, you can, of course, you can stay with us. I'd like to show you around, Musette. I know I didn't get a chance to. Uh, Musette is a brand new agent of, uh, of the uh, Jericho Squad 77. And I guess welcome, Chur Dovir. Uh, you'll be taking your brother's place at least until we can get him back. So, uh, did they follow you? These, these, uh, this Nolianak? No, they, no, we, did they... we lost them. You tried to follow the Nolianak? We did, we did, and unfortunately, they they took a few sharp turns out of the Casperate, and uh, I couldn't keep up. I didn't this strange vehicle. I didn't know how to ride it very well, so uh, unfortunately, we lost them. Oh. Well, yeah, he had uh, to take I, over for a minute because uh, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't prepared to be uh, in a battle so quickly. Yes, mm. the, the Nullianak and we were outnumbered by cultists. So but we overcame the situation and uh, here we are. I understand. Well, um let me show you around. And he, he, um, he, he opens a door and there's a staircase, a spiral staircase going down. And uh, downstairs, the basement is pretty huge and, and it's much bigger than the shop upstairs. And he says, there's a sway on this place. So it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Cool. Uh, I'm a little bit of a sway worker myself. We used to have a... a I used to have a friend who was a, a part of the original Jericho Squad 77, uh, who was a, a great sway worker, and he helped me put this together, but he's gone now. I'm sorry to hear that. He taught me a little bit. I can do a little bit of sways, but not like him. Well, you're in luck because I'm also a sway worker. Are you really? You, you know some fates? Um... Do I? I think I do, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just another word for for, for, for spells. spells. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I do. I do have knowledge. I am. I am. Uh, 
I was in charge of the Arithmetic Library, so I've devoted my life to uh, to studying all these these arcane volumes. So I am I am a sway worker. I will be able to assist as well. Well, that's different from your brother, but it sounds equally uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. He he um. My brother was a great fighter, but unfortunately, like I said, we were outnumbered and, and, and he fought the Nullianak bravely, but unfortunately, uh, the damage he did was not enough to the Nullianak and he was taken. I'm very sorry to hear that. So what we have here, here is an express and uh, he points to the uh, series of tiles in the center of the floor. Uh, this is where Musette came uh, came in. We have quarters, uh, and they they sort of there's a, a an eight, uh, a, and a diag or a, a hexagon with eight mm -hmm. sides, and each side has a door, and and uh, you can pick one that you like the best, but they're all the same. Yeah, an octagon. Yeah. Um. So it's been a long day, and. Uh... You know, I guess we're pretty tired, but we we also have this urgency, but uh, I guess we're going to take take a rest. That's a good I idea. Mean, I, I mean, I think that we should take a rest because we actually have potentially two um, differing uh, paths that we could go. Mm -hmm. Well... As far as helping you with your problem, I think... Are you familiar, Musette, with Squad 53? No. You, you, you've only been in Jericho for just a few days. Right. So you don't really know... You don't know all the different squads and where they're from. No, I think I'm only familiar with Squad 3, correct? That's yes, yeah, about. Squad 3 is the one that you're from. He yeah. says, Squad 53 is from, the is also in the 5th Dominion, uh, a place called Panada. <laughs> and okay. they, uh, they are investigating the ruins of an old uh, graveyard. But I think not, they haven't discovered very much, so... I think that we can call them and have them come to help you. It seems like that. I think that that would be. The Boston Bowl might have given me a vision of somewhere in the Fifth Dominion. So I'm interested in meeting these uh, Squad 53. Well, then oh. that's what we'll do. I'll, I'll call them first thing in the morning. I think right now you're probably tired and want to rest up. Yes. Yes, I think. There's no point in doing anything else tonight, uh, burning ourselves out. Uh, we don't know where they are, so that's our best clue to try to piece together this mess that we've gotten ourselves into. So if you want to watch a movie, I have a VCR, and I have all of these cartoon movies, and I also have one called Blade. I kind of sneer at the suggestion, and uh, I turn to Musette. It's like, hey, you know, knock yourself out. I'm just going to go get some rest and meditate. Are you sure it's open season on all suckheads? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I am interested to know more about this Blade movie of which you speak. Okay. <laughs> I could well, I could, could go for some, can, for some entertainment. You can fill me in on the Fifth Dominion because... The person who gave me this tape said that the Fifth Dominion is full of these vampires. <laughs> I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> I've dated some people who were psychic vampires. <laughs> All right. Okay. So at this point, you can, if you click on the long rest button, <clears throat> that will uh, reset your hit points and give you your spell slots back and stuff. Excellent. So where is that button? Oh, yeah. Long rest. Got it. Yeah. Take and it'll make rest. you, you have to double tap it because they want to make sure you really, really want to do it. Confirm. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So Sounds let great. me go back through the, um, 
It's a cool cliffhanger. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, oh, you get, um, you each get 38 experience for the bandit encounter. 30? 38. 38. Okay, let me add that. Uh, oh, wait, it was right here. And <clears throat> the the cultists in the Nullianak encounter, uh, 633 each. Ooh, 633 plus yeah. 38. Okay, let me add that. So I think, so I think that's going to, because I think you only needed 300 to go to second level. So I think you're both like well into second level. Okay, so set XP. I'm going to add 38. Apply changes and... Oh, wait. What happened here? Okay. And... Sorry, it was 38 and 300 and... What? 633. Um, 633. Yeah, 633 plus thir another 38. Of course, I mean, that, so, that kind of implies that you that you battled the Nullianak and that you won, but I think escaping... Is uh, is also a, a, a feat. What okay. was my previous XP? Was it thirty points from the dream? Uh, <clears throat> it was. Oh, it's all. It should already be in there. I think. Yeah, I clicked set XP, so I gave myself thirty-eight XP points. Oh, it was sixty points. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think sixty, it was 60. points from the dream. And then, and then I think uh, Chirdovir got a little bit of extra in that battle because okay. he he finished off two of them himself. Yeah, you told me uh, we all got 60 XP points after the dream, so I added 60. Yeah. And now I'm going to add 671 points. I think you had, you should have more, because I added more later on yours, so you should have more than 60. Okay, well, like I said, I accidentally, I, tie, I put my points in the set XP, so I reset whatever was in there. Oh, I see what you're saying. So how many points am I supposed to have, if not 60? Uh, I think I added another 10 on top of that. Okay, so I'm going to add 70 points to myself. And then, okay, so 70. And now from 70, I'm going to add 671. 671. Apply changes. I have 741 points, and I am level 2 on the way to level 3 at 900. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, so are you level 3? No, I'm level two. Oh, okay. On the way to level three, which is at 900 gotcha. points. Oh, yeah. okay. And mine's currently at 731, which makes sense because, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Jose had the coolness. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you want to do, do you want to do your level up stuff now or wait until next time? I guess it would be good to wait until next time if that's okay. Yeah. Gives us some time to think about what to pick. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I don't know and what you, any you of that can pick meant. it off offline if you want to, or we can do it during the game. You know, yeah, but we'll yeah. probably go over it uh, when when we start next time. Oh, this okay. is cool. Yep. This is cool. I uh, I enjoyed the meeting Musette and uh, fighting for my brother's life, and uh, I just wish that uh, Bentley Widget spoke a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. How do you uh, spell his last name? Uh, it's like a, a W I D G E T, widget. Oh, yeah. like, a, like literally. A yeah, widget. that's how Magica people pick their names for their kids as they grab a newspaper from the first, the fifth dominion, and they stick a pin through it, and then whatever <laughs> words they pierce through, it's a person's name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I finally started reading it, but uh, I've got to reorganize my life where I can sit down and actually concentrate on something. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a tough book to get through. It's big and and uh, and it has a lot of characters that. Yeah, I started notes. While. I, I had okay. a I have a notebook to go with it to coincide, so that way I can write down the characters because I had to do that with Weave World because I get distracted so easily. Oh yeah. Uh, so I usually just like take notes just so I can remember who's who and what's what and so on and so Is forth. Is this still going to be part idea. of the episode? What's that? Is this still going to be a part of the episode? Uh, I think so. I mean, we could okay. stop it too if you want to. Cool, cool. But yeah, All I right. think this went really well. It was fun. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I deliberately made that battle at the beginning too difficult because I figured you just needed to get out of there. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm curious about this new kingdom of Canada. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Canada. 
can add a all right guys <laughs> well i'm looking forward to um to meeting next time so next time it's going to be different players uh actually next time it'll be everybody everybody me yeah. and musette are going to meet up with scott squad 53 yep coolness looking forward to it i'm going to grab some lunch now all right yeah i'm going to have some breakfast technical producer rob danhauser score imagica cradle of Chersemet by ben warren Character design, Asya Yordanova. And Bird Ninja Art. Additional illustration by Richard Kirk, used with permission. You can find the show notes for this episode and join the discussion over at www.clivebarkercast.com. We've got an archive of past episodes, news, features, and reviews, along with all the ways you can connect with us. You can subscribe on every other place you can find podcasts. Share your thoughts with us and share our podcast with your friends. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and news blog that's not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.